Hello and welcome to Ask GC Anything, the show where you ask us anything and we will answer it, or at least we'll do our best. Sometimes if you ask us stuff that's not about bikes, then we might need to Google it, like I had to for this first question, in fact, from Ripe de Comp, who asked, do you guys ever just wear normal slash daytime clothing to ride, or do you like looking like Dale Earnhardt slash Richard Petty? So I must confess, I did need to Google Dale and Richard. Apparently they're NASCAR drivers, which confused me no end because I'm pretty sure NASCAR drivers don't wear Lycra, and nor do any GCN presenters have moustaches. Although, if I could have a moustache like Dale and Richard, I definitely would. Anyway, in answer to your question, I wear Lycra at all times when cycling, except when I'm just, I don't know, tootling around town and running errands, and then I wear normal clothes. Okay, so moving on, we've got a question from James Lyon who said, when shall I be having a recovery drink such as a protein shake? Obviously after a four hour ride it seems fitting, but when it's just a 45 minute high intensity training session, will I be going backwards if I have a recovery drink? Well, it's a good question actually. I think the first thing to say is that a recovery drink is essentially made up of normal food. Every ingredient in that recovery drink you could get from a different type of food stuff. So the protein might be made up from milk or it might be from soy and the carbohydrate that comes in the science and sport ones that we use is maltodextrin and they get that from maize. But I suppose in essence it's all about timing. So if you were to do your 45 minute training session just before dinner then I'd say no, you wouldn't need a recovery drink. But if you had to wait three hours before having dinner after your session, then a recovery drink would be absolutely perfect. But to understand the recovery process a bit more, then you'd probably just as well to watch this video, which is all about how to recover quickly, which as anyone who trains a lot knows is pretty much the thing you need to aim for. So, have a look. Aside, of course, from not riding your bike, the most important thing is nutrition. So, what does your body need and why? Yeah, well maybe we should start with what actually happens to your body during riding that means you need to recover. Your body needs fuel for riding. And primarily, it's in the form of carbohydrates when you're above 65% of your maximum heart rate and, of course, fat too. Moose Legrand wants to know, when drinking while riding, should you reach for your bottle with your front brake hand or your rear brake hand? Which is a really good question actually. So I reach for my water bottle with my left hand, which means that because I'm British and I use my right hand to brake with my front brake, then I do it that way around. But I'm not entirely sure whether that's a conscious thing or just because I'm left-handed. But now I've thought about it, it definitely makes sense. You always want to leave your front brake hand on the handlebars because you have the best braking control and therefore better for emergencies. Right then, next up, Louis van Garlen. Isn't he a famous football manager or something? Anyway, he wants to know, do you have any tips on pinning on a race number on a skin suit? Yeah, we do actually, we've got plenty, because it is an art form. And I had to wait until I was in my early 20s before someone took me one side and showed me how to pin my race number on properly. So make sure you watch this video because it tells you everything you need to know and your number will always look pro. And once you've done it, you can't go back. Safety pins have long been and remain the most popular way of securing your number to your jersey. There are, however, some modern alternatives which we'll get onto a little bit later on. The number of pins that you have is crucial. Ideally, you want seven for each of the big numbers that you have to put on the back of your jersey. That's three for the top, two for the sides, and two to secure the bottom. That way it will be flush against the jersey and the air won't get in behind it so it becomes something resembling a parachute. Right, quick fire question time now. First of all, we've got Bilal Ahmed, who's asked, is it a good idea to put a new Shimano 105 group set on an old vintage road frame? Well, it's certainly a cool idea, actually, and I think an old vintage road frame deserves to be brought back to life. And if you need to put a new group set on it, then go for it. There are a couple of things that you need to watch out for, though. Often, vintage road frames have slightly narrower spacings on their rear dropouts, so you might need to get them reset. So you've got to hope that your frame is steel in order to do that. And then also, if it is steel, then where the front met clamps on is really, really narrow. So you need to make sure that you buy the right diameter band for your front mech. But otherwise, I reckon you should be good to go, and that sounds cool. Make sure you share the uh, finished bike with us on Facebook. We want to see it. Next, we've got Bill Cosby, who's asked, other than weight savings, why don't pros always use super deep rims? What are the effects of crosswinds? I honestly can't see the negative side effects. Well, this question beneath it from Hugh Bonin 
probably will give you your answer. So he said, this morning on my TT bike, I had a 60 mil front and an 88 mil rear wheel, and I was being moved left and right by heavy winds. Are there any tips to reduce the effect of wind on deep rims? I don't think there are any tips, really. It is just exceedingly difficult to ride deep wheels in windy conditions. So you should really have another set of wheels that are a shallower profile so that you have that option. Because certainly if you're out on open roads, then being blown from side to side is really, really sketchy. And actually it doesn't take all that much wind to blow you clean off. So make sure you do have a second set because they are just really susceptible to crosswinds. All right then, we've got one from Joshua Watson here. This is almost philosophy, this is a good question. When training, is it better to work on my strengths, sprinting, uh, or work on my weaknesses, in his case, climbing? Well, I suppose if it's all about winning bike races ultimately, then you want to make sure that your weaknesses are not holding you back to the extent where you're not actually contesting sprint finishes. So a rider who can climb really well and sprint really well is gonna be contesting more sprint finishes than a pure sprinter. So think Alejandro Valverde, for example, as opposed to Marcel Patel. So you need to weigh up in your mind, I guess, whether your climbing is holding you back and whether you're struggling to reach the finish full stop or whether you're comfortably making the front group, but if you work on your sprint, then you're gonna be winning more races. So have a little think about that one and then let us know because we're really intrigued and we wanna know what actually happens, but good luck anyway. Then finally for Quickfire, we've got Thebered who's asked, how often do pros replace the cleats on their shoes? Well, the answer is probably an awful lot less than GCM presenters because I now seem to do nothing but change the cleats on my shoes. And that is because when we're on shoots making videos, we tend to do quite a bit of standing at the side of the road and walking around. And that seems to me to be what wears your cleats out. So whereas when you're a pro, you don't ever really walk and you certainly don't ever walk in cycling shoes. So actually cleats last quite a long time and they end up staying in good condition for pretty much a whole season. But it probably depends on how many pairs of shoes they have, which is probably quite a lot. Next question now, we've got this from King James, who's said that he's looking to purchase a road specific helmet. He's already got a couple of very nice, he says mountain bike helmets, but he wants some suggestions for when he's buying a road helmet. Well, I'd say that the most important thing about your helmet is that it keeps your head safe. So technically a mountain bike helmet will definitely do the job. Road helmets look very different, and so you will look part of the road helmet, but also, they are uh, perhaps a little bit lighter, perhaps better ventilated, and also now more aerodynamic. So if you need some proper help though, Dan made this great video when he went to the cask factory where he had every type of helmet at his disposal and he talks you through them all just behind me now. 59 centimeters. You're right, it has got bigger since I started at GCN. Helmets. We think that you should wear one every single time you go out on your bike. But when it comes to purchasing one, there's actually loads of options out there on the market and a few considerations that you need to make to make sure that you get the right one for you. We are quite obviously in Cask HQ in Italy. There's loads of other brands out there that you can choose as well. And in this video, we're just going to go through a few of those options to make sure that you get the right one for you. Right, final question this week, and it goes to Dylan Johnson, who's asked, how tight should my skewers be on my carbon road bike? I never know how tight to make them. Well, that is a really, really important question because under tightening skewers and over tightening skewers is equally bad. So you need to make sure you get it right. It's not hard, but this video with Dan just behind me will show you exactly how. All you need to do is tighten the nut opposite the lever clockwise until you get to a point where the lever here is going to do the rest of the job. Now don't over tighten it, you shouldn't have to use both hands to make sure the lever shuts all the way. What I find is that if I can just about do it with my thumb on its own, that that's just about right, it's not going to rattle loose whilst I'm riding. Right, apologies if I haven't got around to answering your question in this week's Ask GC Anything. But if you do want to ask us anything, then make sure you let us know your question in the comments section down below or on Facebook or Twitter using the hashtag TalkBack. Now, if you're after some more GCN content right now, then if you click just up there, you get through to our Giro d'Italia playlist. And given that it's on now and we're updating it with new content every single day, it's probably worth a look. Or if you click just down there, then actually, a video that's very relevant to a question earlier on about how to sprint faster. So make sure you check that one out. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, you just click on the globe.